Welcome to Planet Coaster. Let's get started and build some rides. The Hellion has a pretty high rating for fear and looks fun for my guests. Let's add this to the park. It looks pretty good where it is, but I think I'd like to turn it around. The contextual help panel on the left shows controls specific to the activity, in this case, ride placement. I can hide the help panel with the F1 key or bring it back at any time. Here we can see how to rotate the ride, so let's give it a go. Tapping the Z key rotates in 90 degree steps, but I can also hold down Z and drag the mouse left and right to rotate it smoothly. I can also lift the ride whilst holding shift. I'll tap shift again now to bring it back down. I think it looks pretty good over here. If you're not certain on the position, you can press the move button or press M to move it afterwards. The ride is closed, but needs a few more things before it can be opened. Pay attention to the steps needed on the checklist when you're building a ride. Click the place entrance button and choose a position. This is where the guests will get on to the ride. We need an exit too. Now we need to build a queue path for the guests. If you make a mistake placing a piece of path, or building anything at all, use the undo and redo buttons to fix it. You can use the keyboard shortcuts to make this even faster. Connect the queue to the path to make it functional. We still need a path for the guests to exit the ride. Let's switch from the queues to the regular paths. Now that's complete, we can open the ride. Theme parks are all about roller coasters and Planet Coaster has you covered. We're going to put down one of the pre-designed coasters. I think the Little King is perfect for this park. We just have to add an entrance and exit, like we did with the other ride. We can connect a queue to the station now. Oh, it looks like this ride is off the ground a little. We'll have to adjust the queue to deal with this. Press F1 to check the path controls. You can see that paths can either be raised or lowered by holding down the left mouse button while dragging up and down. The slope flattens out when it hits the ground and we can connect it to the path just like last time. We can add a slope or steps to the exit path in the same way. And it's time to open the coaster. Wait, what's this? It looks like we need to test the coaster first. Safety is extra important with roller coasters, so these rides need a test run before any guests will ride them. You will need to run a test after placing down any coaster in your park. You can see the recorded values for the speed, excitement, fear and nausea all changing while the train goes around the track. Testing measures whether coasters are safe to open to the public and tracks their excitement, fear and nausea values. Rides with a good EFN rating are more popular, leading to bigger profits and more guests in your park. You can also use the ride camera to see how the coaster looks as it goes around the track while it tests. Once the coaster has completed one circuit, you can open it to the public. Remember to use the contextual help panel for controls advice and follow the ride checklist. More importantly, have fun building your dream park in Planet Coaster. Building a custom coaster is the perfect way to make the most of the space within your park and meet the goals of the scenarios. Let's get ready to give your guests the time of their lives. 
select a coaster from the custom menu within the coasters tab. An arrow will indicate the direction the coaster will lead the station. You can extend and change the loading sides by clicking on the station tab and selecting the appropriate layout. Change to the default chain lift section. The chain lift moves the coasters up the hill. To place a track section, simply click on the build button or anywhere on the screen. You'll need to curve the chain lift upwards to a steep angle. To do this, left click and hold the curve icon on the track, then push the mouse upwards. You can also extend the length of your track pieces. Use the slope icon to bend the track down. Build at a steep angle downwards. This is known as the first drop and is one of the most thrilling parts of the ride. On the end of the standard track, there are widgets for bank, slope, curve and length. You can use these to bend and shape your track in an infinite variety of ways. To get a precise angle for your track sections, you can use Angle Snap to lock the track to exact angles. There are a number of pre-built track sections to help you create interesting and varied tracks. Once placed, these can be scaled in size and rotated to fit your track requirements. It is possible to test this as you're building by clicking the test button. This will tell you if the car is going to make it over the section you've just built. As you reach the end of your track, you may want to slow the car down or even add a block section to add another car or train. There is an auto-complete function which will automatically try to complete your coaster. One of the most useful features of the track editor is the ability to edit track you have built. If you have a track section that's too rough or needs some height adjustment, just select the track section and use the widgets to tweak the track. In some cases you might find that your track corners too sharply or the banking is not smooth enough. In cases like these, the smooth options are really handy and are a great way to add polish to your track. Once your track is complete, you can start to get test results that will tell you what kind of ride you've built. Is it scary, intense, or will it make your guests sick? All of this information is displayed in real time. The best coasters will have a high excitement rating, a low nausea rating, and be in the middle for the fear rating. This will ensure you make a ride that your guests will love and want to ride time and time again. Heat maps are a great way of visualising the output of your test results. Now your track is complete and you're happy with the test results, you can start to make it accessible for your guests. You'll need to place an entrance and exit and connect them to the park pathways. It is still possible to change the side from which your station loads, but you'll need to replace the entrance and exit if they're already placed. Now your ride is complete and you're ready to add exciting twists and turns to every park. Everything you build in the park is for the benefit of the guests. Paying attention to the needs of your guests will make a huge difference to your monthly profits. Watch out for the notifications in the corner of the screen. These will let you know everything that needs attention in your park, so be sure to keep an eye on this list, especially items labelled as important. If your guests and staff are unhappy and your rides are breaking down, your park won't be making as much profit as it should. Keeping everybody happy and comfortable is the best way to make them loosen the purse strings. Guest needs are broken down into six different statistics. Happiness, energy, hunger, thirst, toilet, and nausea. Keep all six values well provided for and your guests will be far less frugal. Different guests prefer different types of rides, so every new ride will bring profit to the park. Going on rides is the best way to make guests happy, but it isn't the only way. Scenery always gives a cheer and decorative buildings make the park more appealing. Decorating around your ride queues, shops, and coaster tracks will let you charge more for ticket prices. A little retail therapy will brighten up your guests, so long as the prices are right. Watch out for dirty paths. They'll make people pretty unhappy as they walk around. The happier the guests are, the more they'll pay for shops and rides, so it always pays off to keep everyone happy. Guests will quickly become sad when they get tired. Put down some benches, let them stock up on energy drinks, and they'll even get an energy boost from extra toppings on food. Make sure there are plenty of food and drink stalls. Adding extras can make them more appealing, and some have other effects. Too much salt and chilies might make your guests thirsty, but others will give an energy boost. If you're selling a lot of food and drinks, you'll need to make some bathrooms available. Roller coasters and intense rides will make your guests queasy. First aid stations will make the guests feel better, but sometimes weak stomachs will just get the better of them. 
Taking care of all that vomit is the responsibility of the janitors. Hire some janitors from the park management area. They'll also sweep up the litter and empty the bins. You should always put plenty of bins near the food and drink shops. Hiring entertainers will keep your crowd happy and mechanics will repair your rides or keep them from breaking down. Remember that training your staff will help them work more efficiently and you can even train the vendors that work in the shops. Be sure to pay your staff enough if you want them to work hard. Marketing campaigns can be expensive but are a fantastic way to bring in extra guests when your park is large enough. Managing your loans and repayments will ensure you have enough money to spend as you play. Check up on your guests by using the park management menu. Watch the guest's thoughts to spot any problems. Pay attention to any career or challenge objectives so you're always working towards the next goal. Be sure to set some research projects going so you'll always have something new to offer your guests. Remember, happy guests equal more money. Keep your staff happy, research and build new and exciting rides, and make sure your park is always clean and tidy to maximise profits. Now that you understand the basics of park management, it's time to dig deeper with extra controls for managing your park and making rides super efficient. Everything starts with the park entrance and the cost of entering the park. The entrance ticket price will affect how much your guests expect to pay for individual rides. If you set a high entrance price, guests may expect the rides to be free. Charging guests to enter will bring in a significant sum for a while, but these profits usually drop off in the following months, so don't let those numbers go to your head. Family tickets allow you to charge a separate rate for family members. Families tend to prefer low intensity rides, so depending on how well you cater to that demographic, you can adjust the family ticket price accordingly. Keep an eye out for any missed sales due to expensive park entry. You can check missed sales on shops and rides as well to see when high prices are turning people off. Leaving guest thoughts will show how happy your guests have been with their visit. If guests leave early because they're bored or unhappy, they may even demand a refund. The financial balance sheet will give a detailed view of where your profits and losses are coming from. Be sure to expand the details within each category. Values can fluctuate due to breakdowns and guest arrivals, so monitoring previous months and average values will give a clearer picture over time. Staff members will usually roam freely around the park, but can be made to work more efficiently by assigning regions known as work rosters. Multi-select some attractions and facilities and give this group a name. Choose the new work roster to keep a staff member focused on these items. You can also change which tasks a staff member will undertake, so you can assign one unlucky janitor to keep your park's vomit problem in check. Overworking your staff members will make them miserable and they may even quit. Consider giving them a pay rise or pay for training to allow them to work faster. You can also limit their responsibilities with work rosters and task lists. Hiring extra staff will always help to ease the burden. Checking the overview for all of your staff members allows you to supervise their workload and happiness, as well as quickly managing their training, pay and work rosters. Paying attention to the behaviour of the guests is really important if you want them to spend money. Strategic placement of ATMs can allow guests to keep spending when they're still having a great time but are strapped for cash. They're especially effective when placed amongst groups of shops or by ride entrances. When guests start to bunch up into crowds, they'll move slowly and even block your staff from working efficiently. This can really cause trouble when the paths are dirty as it will quickly make your guests unhappy and the janitors won't be able to clean. Try building networks of paths to avoid choke points and laying wider paths to help in busy areas. When transport rides provide a fast shortcut to interesting parts of the park, guests will pay a good amount for the convenience. If you're serious about your rides and coasters, you'll want to use some of the advanced options available to make them as efficient as possible. The operation sequence on rides can make a huge difference to its length and perceived value, and help to breathe a new lease of life into a stagnant attraction. Once your ride is closed, you can swap the sequences, change the sequence, or change the length. Running a test will show the rides new values for excitement, fear, and nausea, as well as the ride length. Swap things around to tune these numbers to the demands of your guests. Shorter rides are less appealing to guests and guests will pay extra for longer ones. However, longer rides also complete fewer cycles per month and will lead to longer queue times. To maximise profits, try to strike a balance between the ride's overall appeal and the number of guests it can serve each month. Adjusting the load rules can ensure that rides will wait a little longer when there are fewer guests, but get moving quickly when things are busy. 
coasters can handle extra guests by using block brakes to hold extra trains in place. Running multiple trains at once can make your coaster much more profitable. No matter how great your ride is, as soon as it breaks down, you're losing money. Regular inspections will fix up the wear and tear on your rides and stop them from breaking down, so it's worth changing the inspection schedule for the busier rides. Older rides suffer wear and tear more quickly, so it's sometimes worth shutting down the ride and performing a full refurbishment. This will stop the fast rate of wear and tear and make everything as good as new. Enabling priority pass queues will allow guests to pay extra to skip part of the queue. Guests can buy priority passes at any time from information booths, and some will pay good money for a pass that shortens their wait on lots of high quality rides. Remember that some guests won't be willing to spend money to skip the queue, so the priority over queue setting helps you balance this to be fair for everyone. Good use of scenery around the queues will increase a ride's queue scenery rating, which makes guests happier to wait and more willing to pay extra for tickets. You can even boost the experience of a coaster by building scenery along the route. Use trigger points along the track to unleash special effects at key moments, creating some incredible ride experiences that guests are eager to try even when the ticket prices are high. Quality of a ride and its nearby scenery are shown by the prestige rating. This represents the total appeal of a ride to your guests and how much they'll pay for tickets. Sometimes you'll have to take a ride's reputation into consideration. In certain career and challenge levels, rides will maintain their appeal for a short while after being built, but over time their aging reputation will reduce prestige. When rides become unprofitable, it might be worth replacing them. However, if you keep them in your park, then over time they may start to regain their popularity. Keep experimenting with new ways to maximise your park's efficiency and it will soon become a slick, money-making machine full of happy guests and record-breaking rides. Welcome to Planet Coaster. In this video, we're going to run through how to create your own custom scenario. The scenario editor allows you to test your strategy and management skills by allowing you to create scenarios for you and other players to play and enjoy. The scenario editor enables you to play around with the various objectives, park research, demographics, finances, staff, and much more. So let's get started. Select scenario editor on the main menu, click the new scenario button, and choose one of the biomes. Today, we'll be playing in tropical. Give your park a name, select new, and let's jump on in. To create your own scenario, first of all, you need to build a park. Once your park is built, you are now ready to create your own custom scenario. Select the custom scenario button in the top right hand corner of the screen. You will now be able to see the scenario editor panel. Let's start with the objectives tab. The objectives tab allows you to set targets and challenges. Remember, your scenario does not need to have objectives in order to be played. Objectives can be added to any of the three difficulty levels. Pick the corresponding difficulty star from the Add Objective menu. Each objective can be configured to provide a unique challenge. You can choose from various objective types from the drop-down list. This features numerous objectives for finances, guests, management and park. Select the objective type and customise it to your specifications. You can also add other conditions to many of the objectives to make them even more ambitious. To complete an objective, all of the specified conditions must be met. This can include completing objectives by a certain date or monthly profit target. Each objective can be individually edited or deleted by clicking the corresponding icons in their entry. The Park tab controls the size and operation parameters of your scenario. Park size, shape and spawn points allow you to edit the park boundary settings and position of the playable area for the scenario. You can also add more spawn points for guests. Opening times lets the player adjust the opening and closing time of the park as well as the scenario start time. You can also allow or prevent altering the park's opening times during play. You can also set the scenario-wide breakdown rate. You can increase or decrease the breakdown rate, causing rides and roller coasters to suffer faster rates of wear and tear. Additionally, you can set the ride's age or set it to be broken down from the start of the scenario. Terrain editing can allow or prevent the player altering the way the park's terrain appears. This way you can challenge players to come up with clever solutions for the obstacles that you create. Remember that you can also prevent players from moving and deleting scenery objects like trees and rocks. Just select them and use the lock option. The cost for a player to change the terrain can also be increased and decreased or made entirely free. Park capacity can allow or prevent the player altering the park's maximum guest capacity. A lower capacity can create a greater challenge. Track restrictions give you the option to enable or disable any track restrictions put in place during the building of track rides. 
The Finances tab controls the cash flow and loans available within the scenario. The Funds option lets you set the amount of money the player starts with when first playing the scenario. There is no limit to the amount of money that you can spend while creating the scenario. You can also set the amount that is refunded via the refund multipliers. This dictates how much money the player gets back from demolishing objects. You can make any number of loans available to the player. You can also set up to three active loans that the player has to deal with from the beginning of the scenario. The Research tab allows you to set which rides are available for use and research. All objects in the game fall into three research tree categories. Unlocked, which is available from the start of the scenario. Researchable, which is available to unlock from research. And Unavailable, which is not available for research. Each item will only appear in one of the three lists. They can be moved to another by selecting it and pressing the Add Selection Here button beneath the target list. Items within the researchable list are normally available to research from the start of each new game, but by using the Nest Selected button at the top of the list, they can be locked behind another research item. Nested items only become available once the item immediately before them in the list is researched. The research presets let you pick from a list of predefined research trees for the easy, medium, hard and harder challenge modes. You can use these as a starting point for your own scenarios. The Marketing tab controls which advertising campaigns are available during play. You can allow or prevent the player starting any marketing campaigns and set the maximum number of campaigns that may be run concurrently. The marketing campaigns available in the scenario must be selected from the available campaigns list. The Staff tab determines how the different types of staff will behave in the scenario. The general staff settings apply to all staff types and make them harder or easier to keep them happy and productive. The staff type settings control the individual staff disciplines such as Entertainer or Janitor. Each of the disciplines may be customised to provide an additional challenge or to make the scenario easier for the player. The Guest tab controls which kinds of guests enter the park and the various guest traits. The Demographic controls the rate at which guests enter your park. How quickly they become unhappy can be adjusted as a percentage of their normal default rates. The Park Attractiveness graph represents how likely specific groups are to visit your park out of three demographics. Adults, teenagers and families. This graph can be adjusted to favour a specific group or remove one entirely. Demographic segregation allows you to decide the percentage of single or group attendance for adult and teenager groups in your park. The Guest Traits section of the window can be customised with a range of options. The Guest Traits slider determines the chance that a guest will spawn with a certain trait. The Presets option applies a global none, low, medium or high chance that guests will have certain traits. The Spawn Chance section allows more control over specific guest traits, such as Coast Ahead or Scaredy Cat. This allows you to add another additional challenge layer to your scenario. The Crime tab controls all theft and vandalism in the scenario. You have the ability to enable or disable the option for the player to change the security features. Each group that spawns into the park has the potential to be vandals, as determined by the Spawn Chance slider. Once the happiness of a vandal group falls below the vandal happiness threshold, they will seek to vandalise the park to regain happiness. Pickpockets will begin spawning into the park once the minimum number of guests are present, up to the maximum total number of pickpockets. The higher difficulty pickpockets run faster and longer, making them more able to evade the security guards. Security guards can also be set to be more or less likely to spot passing pickpockets by adjusting the spot chance multiplier. To save your scenario, select the cog in the top right hand corner of the screen and click Save Park. Then press Save Scenario. To play and share your scenario, return to the main menu, click Scenario Editor and select My Scenarios. You will be given the option to play scenario, edit scenario, upload to workshop or delete. So what are you waiting for? Give it a go! Create your own scenarios and share them with the Planet Coaster community on the Steam Workshop.
What's going on ladies and gentlemen, Johnny5 Live here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys some tips and tricks for Planet Coaster, going over some coaster. 